Sometimes it seems that the, um, the traditions of yesteryear are gone. The times where mothers and grandmothers and daughters and aunts would sit around and um, give advice and take advice and teach one another the things that they learned to, to be able to sustain their home and make their um, uh, lives happy, the relationships that they had, and give really good sound advice, especially advice that come from the Word of God. Hi, I'm Pete, and this is Shauna, and on a daily basis, we want you to come in our home and share in Bible study. We believe the absolute best way to disciple your family is through studying the Word of God and then discussing it together. Today, we're on Titus chapter 2, verses 3 through 5. Likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, to not be slanderous or addicted to wine, but to teach what is good. Then they can urge younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled and pure, to be busy in the home, to be kind and be subject to their husbands, so that no one will malign the Word of God. So just as we talked about yesterday, the Apostle Paul is giving this um, good advice, this sound doctrine on uh, men passing information, wisdom, talent, skill, direction down from generation to generation. Uh, the older generation giving wisdom and knowledge to the younger. Now we have women as well. And you, you know the thing that, that he does here is he says that it should flow from the church, right? There should be teaching in the church. To, that the adult women learn these things. They learn to be reverent. They learn to control their tongue. They learn to be teachers of the truth, it says, that they should be able to teach the younger women in the church. So from the, from the pulpit, these women learn these things, but they just don't keep them to themselves. It's kind of like a grandma passing on a recipe for her buttermilk biscuits, right? Yeah. To her, her, her granddaughter or her daughter. You know, but these women would do this with godly living. Right? You, you go into the home and they would teach their daughters, no, you don't act that way. No, you don't dress that way. No, you don't say that. This is how you behave to be a woman of God. And, and it would be like that recipe sharing, only they would teach them the ways of God. Right. So um, a pastor would teach a woman how to be uh, reverent, you know, a godly character to control their tongue, uh, to be teachers of the truth, you know, and not teachers of gossip and... Um, uh, it's not about our opinions. Um, it's about the wisdom and the truth of God because that is what is going to stand. Um, our opinions have uh, a tendency to carry um, uh, the weight of maybe our experiences or our feelings. And uh, it doesn't always carry the truth. And he says if the, the older women in the church, the adult women, would pass this information on, that the younger generation would glean these things. He said that they would be good wives. Mm -hmm. They would be good parents or good mm -hmm. mommies, right? So we would have a generation of good wife, good, good, good uh, mothers and housewives who took care of things. And that doesn't mean that they'd stay home in the house. It just means that they would be loyal to their husband. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they would be self-controlled um, and pure. You know, they would be able to, okay, I'm going to be able to control what I spend. I'm going to be able to control what I say. I'm going to be able to... Um, <clears throat> not lash out at my children. You know, a lot of women hold a lot of mom guilt because uh, you find yourself getting frustrated because of, not just because of maybe the behavior of your children, but of all the stress of maintaining a home. So what happens? You begin to yell at your kids, right? And and you feel... She does. Yeah, that, happens. that happens. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it, say, it goes on and says they would be kind, they would be loving, uh, they would be living out the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And you know that we need more women like this in our society. For that to take place, it's going to take an older generation. She's old. But no, but we have a daughter, right? So she has to learn now so she can pass that on to Anna. Anna is just six months old, but Shauna has to be willing and ready to teach her the ways of God. And a lot of times that is basically just studying the Word of God. Uh, seeing it in something like Proverbs 31, right, where it talks about what a woman of God should look like, or other scriptures in the New Testament that tells us of how God used women in powerful ways, and, and, and they not lowering them, but, but using them in a way that, that would um, change the world, right? Just look what he did with Mary. Uh, the mother of Jesus, to select this young woman, a, a virgin, to carry the Son of God. What an amazing calling, right? But someone had to sow into Mary's life before Mary was ready to do that. 
And then we got to be able to pass that on from generation to generation. If you read in the Old, Old Testament, it was the same uh, situation. It was the same tradition. You know, there it, there comes a time where people can't do the labor. They can't be mm -hmm. building uh, buildings. They can't be carrying the bricks. They, they can't be uh, tilling the gardens. They can't be doing those kind of things. But what they can do is they can teach. They can teach. And it's important for us to teach what we know, what God has given us through his word and through uh, our experiences in trusting him throughout our lives. So we want to encourage you that every day you live uh, intentionally for Christ and that you exalt him, you encounter God, you edify yourself by reading the word of God, and you engage this world for Jesus Christ. It's important for us to share what God has given us, and he has given us love, compassion, he's given us wisdom, and he's made us his hands and feet. And so just that, a, a quick note before we end, remember this, you don't have to have physical children to do this. Yep. There's plenty of godly men and women in the church who don't have physical seed, yet they are spiritual parents to those in the congregation. They teach them how to live righteously, and that's what we need. That's right. Until next time, God bless.